I'm going to teach you how to be the best duelist on your team in Marvel Rivals. Imagine knowing how to play all the DPS characters so you can get team kills every other game. I want that for you. I'm going to teach you how to play every damage or duelist hero in Marvel Rivals. The way this is going to work with me explaining all the characters is I'm going to tell you their abilities first, then I'm going to explain their play styles. The first character we're going to be talking about is the Punisher. You'll find their ability and weapon kit familiar to other traditional third person shooters. So the Punisher carries both an automatic rifle and pump shotgun that you can freely swap between depending on your scenario. The automatic rifle makes the Punisher one of the most consistent characters to take out hovering and flying enemies such as Iron Man or Storm. His shotgun is one of the strongest weapons in the game if you land a headshot in optimal close range. It's also great for close corners and especially when you have a right peak advantage. His secondary fire Scourge Grenade shoots a smoke grenade and the Punisher also leaps backwards. He possesses a passive ability that allows him to see the outline of enemies that break his line of sight which works well together with his smoke bomb allowing you to shoot targets within the smoke bomb, but making it more difficult for them to see you or your team. This is the ability you want to use when you're already in the fight and want to disrupt the enemy. Heal up, escape, or regroup with your team. With the Punisher's movement ability, it allows him to create a reusable zipline. You can quickly get him to other positions pretty fast. He gets a significant jump and speed boost at the end of the zip, and you just basically get launched. You can have a maximum of three ziplines out at once, with your oldest zipline being replaced by the newest. One of his abilities is the cold turret, and it is a turret that you mount that provides defense where you're facing and does a lot of damage. You're quite vulnerable though from behind, your sides, and above, so keep that in mind. His ultimate ability basically allows you to use dual miniguns and missiles that unleash a ridiculous amount of damage, but keep in mind it provides no defense. As for the team up ability in the closed beta, you can synergize with Rocket whenever he places down an ammo overload device, which gives you a higher fire rate and infinite ammo. Now that we know what the Punisher's abilities are, let me tell you how to play them. The Punisher is a character that you want to find the widest angle for where you have a good amount of distance. Compared to most of the hero roster, he is quite vulnerable in close range and has no damage reduction abilities, so you need to play to map advantage and your own strengths. Find a good position on higher ground that gives you an off angle to the enemy team, and use your turret to suppress them and potentially get any picks you can. If you don't know what an off angle is, look at this example. The enemy and my team are engaged in a fight and are facing each other. The enemy is using cover to reduce damage from my team. So when I engage them from an angle where they're exposed but also pressured by my team, this is an off angle where I can make a lot of space or do a lot of damage, which is why the turret is amazing because it provides defense and offense in the direction you're facing. This isn't the same as flanking, it's more so just positioning, about playing to your strengths and not putting yourself in a bad spot. If the enemy team has any flying or hovering characters, make sure to focus them because you are one of the best characters at dealing with them, and left unchecked, they will farm your team. If you see a flanker coming to approach you, pull out the shotgun early. There is a delay between switching weapons, so you're going to want to have this weapon pulled out before fighting a flanker. I find Spider-Man to be the Punisher's biggest counter because he's hard to shoot with a rifle and web slinging and his mobility makes it challenging to take him out with a shotgun so always watch out for him as he likes to attack from above. Storm is the next character we're going to talk about. She is very unique compared to the other DPS characters because she plays much more like a support with her positioning. Passively, she is always in flight allowing you to move in any direction you like which is cool but if you're not careful you can easily make yourself an easy target for the enemy if not mindful of cover. You will notice a ring around her that grants her allies buffs with either increased movement speed or increased damage depending on the selected weather. You can see how many allies and enemies are in your radius at the center of your screen, labeled by two numbers. To shift between weather states, just use her weather control ability. You can use her goddess boost ability to take those buffs even further with even more movement speed or damage. If you boost her thunder damage, then any enemies within her circle also take additional lightning damage too. For her primary attack, she throws wind blades from her fingertips and they can go through multiple targets. When firing your enemies at farther ranges, you're going to need to lead your shots and maybe even line them up a little bit to hit multiple targets because her wind blades are projectiles that need to travel over time to reach targets. It takes a little getting used to. Her secondary fire is a bolt of lightning that can also pass through multiple enemies, but it is hit scan, meaning if the enemy is on the other side of your crosshair when you use this ability, they would take damage and you do not have to lead any shots with this. Let me also add that her secondary fire does a lot of damage when combined together with a boosted thunder damage buff. It really does help focus fire single targets very quickly. 
Her ultimate ability literally turns her into a violent hurricane that pulls in nearby enemies and unleashes an insane amount of damage. The best part about this ultimate is that Storm becomes temporarily invulnerable before selecting where she wants her hurricane to appear. Storm's team up ability is with four and she conjures lightning that chains between enemies. Perfect, now we know all her abilities, but how do we play her? For Storm's playstyle, you need to stick with your team or at least focus on assisting your teammates to have the most value. Using her tornado buff that gives allies additional movement speed, you can manage the ebb and flow of your team to keep them in position or at least where they need to be. Sometimes your team needs speed to get closer to the objective, chase enemies that are low HP, or even sometimes you need to help your team escape a bad situation. When your team has found its position, swap to the thunder buff to give your teammates additional damage when they're in the desired position. I would recommend not using her goddess boost wastefully Wait for a good opportunity where you or a teammate can secure a knockout with either boosted speed or damage. It's a lot better. Your biggest challenge with Storm is your lack of mobility. You're going to need to play around cover in the environment to avoid making yourself an easy target. She makes a great anchor for the team, so you don't want to split off or try flanking anyone on your own, as that would put you in a vulnerable position. Storm's true value lies together with her team. When you see the enemy grouped up and close together, those are your best opportunities for using her ultimate. You can move the hurricane for a little bit and draw enemies closer to you before it goes away. So you can chase fleeing enemies and draw them in with the storm. Wow, you actually made it this far. I'm impressed. The next year we're going to talk about is Hella. Hella is a character that a lot of you are going to love, and I think it's safe to say she's one of the best characters in the game. Her primary attack does significantly high critical damage at any range. It's insane. Enemies directly eliminated by her primary attack explode after a short delay dealing damage to other nearby enemies. To add on, her secondary fire shoots four night swords that each explode after a short delay as well, and they also have a decent range of AoE allowing her to damage multiple targets within close proximity. Hela possesses a movement ability called Astral Flock which allows her to transform into a crow flying forward in whatever direction she's facing. This is a good ability to get in advantageous positions. You can also combine this ability with her other passive which allows her to slowly fall when holding your jump key. Her secondary ability Soul Drainer stuns nearby enemies and pulls them to the surface of your orb's point of contact. You can combine this with her secondary fire or try to line up a headshot if possible. For her ultimate ability she hovers at a high vantage point in the air and throws down extremely strong explosive projectiles. These projectiles have a huge damage radius and are not that hard to get damage with. As for her team up ability in the close beta, she can instantly resurrect Loki when eliminating an enemy or grant him bonus health when eliminating an enemy if Loki's still alive. Aren't those abilities crazy? But how do we play her? To play hella well, you need to keep your distance and focus down squishier targets such as enemy duelists and enemy support. Try not to focus on enemy tanks too much unless you need to defend a teammate close to getting eliminated. Most of the time you want to shoot around the tank at the enemy supports. Using her astral flock movement ability to either reach higher ground or hover in air will create more opportunities to find those picks or get good damage with her primary fire and abilities. Use her soul drainer orb to stun and pull them closer so that you can land her attacks or abilities easier and it also helps your teammates too. If your enemy falls into predictable movements such as strafing side to side, try to land a headshot as that crit damage is thicker than premium banana bread. You will find many more easy opportunities to finish low HP enemies this way. And I just want to note that headshots are incredibly important. Y'all should try to get headshots as much as you can. Avoid taking fights close range. You can do this by saving her astral flock only for getting to a higher safe position or fleeing away back to your team. Now we're going to talk about the king himself, Black Panther. This is the type of character that you need to choose your engagements with precisely. He's not easy to learn and, in my opinion, is the hardest DPS in the game to learn. Timing is everything with Black Panther. With his primary attack being close range, you are going to need to rely on your abilities to get the most value out of him. There are three abilities you need to understand and know like the back of your hand to play him well. That is his Sprint Rend, Spinning Kick, and Spear Toss abilities. With Spear Toss, Black Panther throws a spear that detonates, creating a Vibranium Force Field that attaches Vibranium Mark to affected enemies. Vibranium Mark is a very important status effect that will appear over affected enemies' heads, and I will explain why it is important shortly. But let me finish explaining the abilities first. Spinning Kick is basically a forward kick 
that also attaches Vibranium Mark to affected enemies. Sprint Rend lunges Black Panther forward, but if he hits an enemy afflicted with Vibranium Mark, not only does he get bonus health, but his Sprint Rend ability resets, allowing him to use it again. And that's what's crazy about him. It is because of this ability why understanding how to apply Vibranium Mark is very important. Because you need to use Sprint Rend on targets afflicted with his status effect to do more damage. It is a central component to his kit. Black Panther can run up walls and can also double jump after running up a wall as well. So he has decent mobility, and the lower his health becomes, the more damage he deals. His suit will also begin to glow when he's at low health to help uh, signal to you that he's low health but that he can do a lot of damage. His ultimate ability is also pretty strong when used correctly. Black Panther launches the spirit of Bass forward dealing a lot of damage, applying Vibranium Mark and resetting Sprint Rend. His team ability is with magic and it's actually pretty useful. It allows him to directly teleport to a location of his choosing within a medium distance. Wow, those abilities are pretty cool. But how do we put them to use? Your playstyle for Black Panther is mostly going to be flanky because the majority of his kit is close range and it's built around sprint rent. With his passive ability to run up walls, you want to find areas where you can sneak past the enemy and attack unpredictably. I found the double jump off a wall run extremely helpful in this way. Applying Vibranium Mark before using Sprint Rend is essential to his playstyle. I found that using his secondary fire made it much easier to mark players. Using Spear Toss, Sprint Rend, Spinning Kick, and then Sprint Rend again, I found this to be a consistent damage combo. As you get used to resetting his Sprint Rend cooldown, his kit will feel a lot more natural to you. And using his ultimate ability, I found it most consistent when using it from behind the enemy or at the side. I would say you want to engage with Sprint Rend before using the ultimate so you can get the extra damage since the ultimate also resets Sprint Rend anyway. So you might as well use it for free before popping your roll. And make sure you're facing the team when you're using the ultimate because the spirit launches Bast forward. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on Black Panther. I'm actually really curious what y'all think about this character. Next up is my favorite character, Magic. Magic is a melee type of hero that passively converts damage on enemies into bonus health for herself. This allows her room to find combos against enemies without being too defenseless. Her primary attack is Soul Sword and it allows her to hack and slash her way towards enemies. It actually has decent range. You don't need to be as close to your targets as one would think, like shown here. Her secondary fire magic slash throws a projectile forward that deals pretty good damage and the longer your charge is, the more damage it does. It is useful in finishing low HP enemies or before engaging a target directly. Her primary ability stepping disc moves her a short distance in whatever direction she's moving and allows her to use either one of two abilities, Eldritch Whirl or Demon's Rage. Eldritch Whirl is an AoE attack where she swings her sword in a radius around herself and Demon's Rage causes her to summon an imp that does a melee attack in whatever direction she's facing at the time of the summon. Her secondary ability, Umbral Incursion, is a strong mobility technique that she can use in whatever direction she's facing. When used against an enemy, it launches them upward into the air, ready for a combo. Though it can also be used to escape out of a bad situation and doesn't always have to be used aggressively. Her ultimate ability turns her into Dark Child, making all her abilities do more damage and with a lower cooldown. In this state, she is extremely dangerous and capable of multi-kills. Her normal sword attacks even do damage over time in this state. Isn't she awesome? Here's how to play her. To play her well, try not to engage from the front line. She's pretty good at doing burst damage and finishing off enemies that are on half HP, so you can try to attack from off angles at the side or even jumping down at an opponent to finish them off. Don't be afraid to use her Umbral Incursion often to find a better position or escape a bad situation. It's, it's just as good a mobility attack as it is a damage ability. She is very good at Brawl, so dodging with Stepping Disc and performing combos will give you enough bonus health to stay in the fight. Personally, I like the surprise attack enemy supports from flanking positions to reduce the enemy's healing before engaging on the rest of the team. Charging up for secondary fire and landing an attack before engaging is good burst damage and can help you secure eliminations when flanking. In her Dark Child form, I recommend you only use this ultimate against multiple enemies as using it on only one is just overkill. The Eldritch World Spin attack is very good in my opinion against multiple enemies in Dark Child form as well. She's a lot of fun and really simple to play, so definitely a recommendation. Next up, we talk about Iron Man. 
Iron Man is a pretty good character as well. The guy has a passive that literally allows him to stay in the sky the whole time, out of sight, out of mind, which is pretty cool. Their primary attack shoots projectiles that have a blast radius, potentially hitting other enemies, but of course does the most damage for direct hits. It's a good damage to over crowd control and hitting enemies behind cover and out of sight. His ultimate fire unibeam channels a beam of energy forward, dealing damage with each tick. This attack is great for focusing damage on specific targets or hitting other enemies in the sky. His first ability, Hyper Velocity, enables forward flight, giving him additional speed. He can also bombard enemies below him with micro missiles, which I think is incredible. I recommend going into your settings, then to your input, which is your keyboard or your controller, then going to all heroes here, uh, then go to Iron Man, and then you may want to consider changing the setting hold to perform Hyper Velocity. You want to change this to on. What this does is disable the toggle of this ability and makes it so you have to hold it so that it gives you more control of his forward flight. I just found the toggle odd personally and it often made me move forward unintentionally into the enemy when I really didn't want to. If activating his second ability Armor Overdrive, both his primary and secondary attacks are buffed and do more damage. He can also fire missiles in this state. His team up ability lies with the Hulk allowing him additional damage in his overdrive state. His ultimate ability, Invincible Pulse Cannon, unleashes devastating and heavy damage capable of one-shotting enemies too close. His abilities are really simple, so let's talk about how to put on the use. His playstyle is very pokey because he's an easy target to hit for some heroes, so you really need to utilize cover and shoot around corners a lot of the time. When enemies challenge him in 1v1s, his secondary fire is very good and extremely reliable in winning those engagements. I also find it much easier to take out other flying heroes with Iron Man's alternate fire as it does have a good amount of range on it and is consistent damage if you've got the aim. It is best to stay at a distance and use his primary fire to target the enemy supports for his team. If enemy tanks dive your team then it's better to use his ultimate fire to do more damage quickly, it really does melt. Try not to waste his overdrive ability, you want to time it at an opportunity when enemies are grouped up or to eliminate an enemy tank attacking your team. The Punisher is his biggest counter, so you need to always keep an eye on him as he is not going to leave you unchecked. You'll need to keep his position in mind and focus him down before fully committing and exposing yourself out in the open to an attack on the enemy team. His ultimate is best used when a group of enemies are extremely close together in a tight space such as a choke point or corridor because their movement is limited. Now, the best web slinger, our friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man. Our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is our next hero to discuss. He is extremely fast and a difficult character to play correctly. He has a lot of things going on, so let's get into it. Let's start out with his passives. He has Spider Sense and Wall Crawl. Spider Sense gives him a warning when enemies are nearby and Wall Crawl allows him to crawl on walls and run up them. He can also double jump too, which is pretty useful. These passes make overall navigation and movement much easier, allowing him more opportunities to surprise the enemy. With his primary attack, you have to be pretty close. He punches enemies and deals increased damage to enemies with the Spider Tracer. To put a Spider Tracer on an enemy, Use his secondary fire web cluster to shoot like a web projectile. It has a good range and you're able to shoot it almost any time. For his abilities, he has three. His primary ability, get over here, has two functions. When using it against an enemy without a spider tracer, it pulls them closer to him. But when using it against an enemy with a spider tracer, he pulls himself to them. It's great for singling out specific targets like enemy supports. The secondary ability leads into an amazing combo with uppercut punch that can affect multiple enemies if close enough. It also does increased damage to enemies that have a spider tracer, so it's better to shoot enemies with your secondary fire first before engaging. As for his third ability, Web Swing, he has three web swings at a time with each on a short cooldown. Web Swing allows him to travel a lot of distance. Expect him to travel very far with a single web swing. It's not really that good to use in small spaces. In fact, you'll probably end up getting yourself taken out, trying to. You want to use it in a big space to make the most out of it. You can swing to a better position and escape situations or get behind enemy lines much easier than most heroes. So take advantage of this and remember to heal up when fleeing a fight. 
Spider-Man's ultimate ability is a spectacular spin, which is a strong attack that does huge AoE damage in a radius around him, where he unleashes webs damaging and stunning enemies. Just jumping into a group of enemies and then using this is fun. For his team-up ability, he needs Venom on his team who shares his symbiote and grants him an additional ability called Suit Expulsion, which converts the symbiotes into explosive spikes that do damage and push enemies back. He's fast, he's strong, but how does he play? For his playstyle, you need to play like an assassin. Out of sight, out of mind, and extremely fast. As Spider-Man, you want to eliminate vulnerable and expose targets quick. Focus on targets that are out of position, alone, or weak. An easy way to do this is by paying attention to who your teammates are damaging or by looking for targets separated from their team. Web swinging gives you a huge visual on the enemy team so you can decide who you want to target while web swinging. Crawling above the enemy or very quickly web swinging will give you the opportunities you need to find these engagements. You don't really want to attack tanks at full HP. It's the squishier supports or enemies with range like Hela, Iron Man, and the Punisher that you want to focus on taking out. If you're attacking a tank at full HP, you're probably not doing the right thing. Spider tracers are incredibly important to his kit, so always try to apply them whenever you can. Shoot them with the spider tracer, then use get over here to pull yourself to them so that you can uppercut them and finish them off with a punch or two. You might as well because this ability allows him to get more damage with his punch and his uppercut. Spider-Man is extremely squishy himself, so always make sure to have at least one web swing before beginning an attack and don't stay in the fight too long. You really want to get in, do the damage, and get out. Find those med packs when you're getting out of the fight or get back to your supports to heal up before re-engaging. This next character is Chaos itself. Scarlet Witch. She's a really fun character to play and actually pretty simple to use. Her primary attack simply tethers Chaos Magic to the enemy she's aiming at and it does damage. The attack has a lot of range and it's really hard to miss with. All you need is decent tracking. While it doesn't do the most damage, you can get a lot of value out of its range and finish targets before they get around the corner. This ability restores her chaos energy as well, which is the ammo for her secondary fire. Her secondary fire, Conthonian Burst, shoots this chaos energy, which does more damage and it even has a small blast radius. Her primary ability, Mystic Projection, makes her immune from all damage and allows her free flight in any direction she desires. This pairs well with her passive ability because she can fall slowly when holding down the jump button in air. Her Dark Seal ability allows her to shoot a force field that she can also choose to detonate early, which periodically stuns enemies within its range. It's good for comboing with her ultimate ability or secondary fire. Her team-up abilities give an allied Magneto an additional damage ability that lets him use his sword to fire Chaos Energy. As for her ultimate ability, it is extremely strong and can one-shot many heroes in the game. She overwhelms herself with her Chaos Energy, which charges up and then unleashes it at anyone caught in the massive blast radius. It has a lot of crowd control, but be wary as she is vulnerable in the state and can die, so don't use this recklessly. Enemies can hide behind cover to avoid this attack, so keep your line of sight when using it. She is a fun character, so here's how she plays. For her playstyle, you want to control higher ground and attack from above. She is a menace if you utilize the range at which her primary fire allows while attacking from a higher position. You can use Mystic Projection to fight from above while attempting to stun the enemy with Dark Seal and use her secondary fire for damage. When running out of ammo for her secondary fire, make sure to use her primary fire to restore energy so that she can use her kit to its fullest. She's great at finishing off low targets from unique angles and doing consistent damage from above. Try to engage with her secondary fire, then use her primary fire to leech more energy. And remember to use the stun before dealing damage. And you can detonate it early. She is better to use alongside the team, so try not to flank too much or be too split off. For her ultimate ability, you want to surprise the enemy with this when using it. Attacking from an off angle or above can help you land more multi-kills. This ultimate, when landed correctly, is Aura. This next hero is a Garden of Our Galaxy, Star-Lord. Star-Lord is an extremely fast burst damage dealer. He's extremely good at doing a lot of damage very quickly, but he needs to be close to have value. His primary fire are dual guns with high fire rate and they shoot so fast that he reloads very often. 
Pairing this up with his secondary ability Stellar Shift, which he has two charges of, lets him do a short flip dodging in the direction he's moving while also reloading his guns. Bursting down targets then using this ability very quickly increases his overall DPS. His primary ability Rocket Propulsion essentially lets him fly forward in any direction he's facing. I recommend going into your settings, then to your input, which is your keyboard or controller, then going to All Heroes, then click Star-Lord, and then change this setting. Hold to activate Rocket Propulsion, switch it to On. What this does is it disables the toggle's ability and makes it a hold, giving you more control of his forward flight. His Blasted Barrage ability fires a bunch of shots at an area around him, and it actually does a lot of damage, but over time. It's a less stronger version of Spider-Man's ultimate, but it functions the same. His ultimate ability, Galactic Legend, grants him flight while also enabling an aim lock at targets close enough to him, preventing him from missing his shots. You can also use his secondary ability, Stellar Shift, while using his ultimate, which will increase your overall DPS. His team up ability is with Adam Warlock, and basically when Star-Lord dies, you can res yourself somewhere nearby of your choosing, but enemies can still see you. Now that you know his moves, let me tell you how to use them. For your playstyle, you want to stay mobile and attack enemies from a mid to close range. Utilizing his rocket propulsion can easily take him to higher ground where he can fire from above into the enemy backline. Use his blasted barrage ability to continue to reset his reload. Save his rocket propulsion to escape engagements. The only time you really want to use it before an engagement is to chase an enemy that is very close to getting eliminated. He's a fairly simple character, but he does not have a lot of defense, so you need to stay on the move. Finally, a king of the ocean, we have Namor. He possesses the trident of Neptune, which he can toss forward. This primary attack is a projectile, so sometimes you need to anticipate where the enemy is going to be. Upon hitting an enemy, it also reduces the cooldown of his primary ability, Aquatic Dominion. Aquatic Dominion essentially allows you to summon Monstro that look like squids that automatically attack enemies the same way turrets do. You always want to throw these out when you can. They're on a really short cooldown, so use these whenever you can because they attack everything and also force the enemy to attack them. His secondary ability, Blessing of the Deep, surrounds him in his fear of water and raises him higher above ground, protecting him completely. He also has a hidden ability, which isn't labeled anywhere for some reason, and that is the ability to fall slowly like Hela or Scarlet Witch. His secondary fire, Wrath of the Seven Seas, also launches his trident forward, but it will direct all Monstro to attack that same target. So make sure you have your monster out before using this ability to maximize its value. His ultimate ability, Horn of Proteus, lets him summon a Giganto, which is like a big fish that dives down from where you want onto the enemy, disabling their mobility. It does a lot of damage as well, but it has a limited radius, so really use it when enemies are stuck together or grouped to get the most value out of it. His team up attack is with Luna Snow. This basically allows you to spawn a monster with ice energy and also boosts his other abilities and attack. His moves are really great, so here's how to use them. If you want to play around your monstro, they are essential and key to his damage. Think of them as turrets. You can place them along any surface. I like to place them higher up on walls because monstro have a good range to fire upon enemies. I find that they have a better line of sight of enemies when used this way. If you have Luna Snow's team up, the ability granted by her should also be used with your monstro. When your monster are out, you want to make sure you can hit targets with your secondary fire so that they can focus down your designated target and eliminate them much easier. I find it easier to use Blessing of the Deep to reach higher ground to throw my monstro on higher walls to give them a better line of sight on the enemy. You can also fall slowly after using Blessing of the Deep to also get a better angle and deal more damage. Namor is a tactical hero when played correctly, and I think he's really underrated right now. Check out my Twitch, link in the description below if you want to see me play the game, and please like the video.